Hi guys! Today we will be going through different kind of altar that you can use for elemental magic. Now you can set up the altar depending on the intention you have. If you work with certain idea, then you can set up your altar for that idea. Let's say if you're working on a love spell, you would want to set up your altar to match the fire element. But on each altar, you include all five elements because this is how they support each other. Let's say the regular Wiccan altar has god and goddess candle or a figure. Then there is a place for the chalice and for the athame, for the pentagram in the middle. And we pretty much all know how it's supposed to look. Then we have the altars that are used for different celebrations on the wheel of the year. So for all the different Sabbaths, we use certain setup. You have a different altar for sewing, then you have one for llamas and so on. Then if you're working with the deity or with several, you most probably have an altar set up for each one of them or one altar for several deities. And they also include the picture or the picture of that deity. And of course, we add any symbols, any offerings that are specific to that deity as well. Then we have the altars that we keep year-round to focus, to do our meditations and just our everyday work. At the end, we have the elemental altars and they're a tiny bit different. When you choose to work with one element or two elements in order to achieve something, you will be setting up your altar from scratch. And this is why we learned all the previous theory, because you should be able to put stuff on there depending on your intention. We can start by choosing one of the five colors, which are green, red, yellow, white, and black or blue. We can of course use any color for any altar, but if you really want to focus on something and to attune yourself, you can also choose to use the color. Then on every altar, as I said, we have all five elements showing. Those five elements are just to help you put on there different stuff that you can use. So for the tree element, it's mostly different incense sticks or the resins or different oils that you can use in the oil dispenser. And you can put there any plant matter that you intend to use. So any herb, anything that belongs to a tree or moss or anything like that goes onto the tree element side. Then we have the fire element represented by the candle and either a small plate or a cauldron where you actually are going to burn stuff. Then we have different stones and crystals that we can use for our elemental work and they go on the right from fire. And here you have a huge choice because you can use the stones which match by color. Then you can use the stones which match the chakras. You can use the stones which actually have a meaning connected to your intention. They don't have to match the color. This is all you and how you want it to be. When using different pendulums, I place them there. And then we have the metal element, which is usually your athame. Also, you can place any type of feather on there or anything that is also air connected. If you're using cymbals or drums, you can place it in your metal element. Although drums can also belong to the water element. And then we have the water, which is right in front of us, which is your chalice containing any type of liquid that you intend to use. You can put any offering on there. And usually we use the salt or black salt or any type of dirt from the outside or graveyard dirt even, or anything that represents the dirt like the cornmeal. You can use the bones on your altar and those usually go either to the earth element or to the water element, depending where they come from. If they do come from the water, which is usually shells or some fossils, then they go to the water element. If they come from the earth, they go to the earth element. So basically anything you use for your intention has a place on an altar. And as you get more familiar with it, it's going to be easier to set up your altar. We'll look at some setups now so you can get an idea. Let's start off with a tree element altar. I've chosen a green cloth. This is not a very green one, but I have several. 
unlike on the regular altars where there's a set place for everything, we have placed the things here to match the elements. So here we have the water element which is shown through salt and through the chalice that contains the water. Then here we have the tree element. The tree element either uses some seeds or moss, this is Palo Santo, or the incense sticks. This incense is from lemongrass or anything that is sour tasting or smelling would be appropriate. Then we have the fire element in the back. This is my little cauldron where I burn stuff. And this is a little candle that has the matching color. It's a little bit black and green, but doesn't matter much. Then we have the earth element here. Again, shown through different stones this time. One of the stones is jade and the other is fluorite because fluorite belongs to the tree element as well. It's moving and has different colors, so that matches the tree. Or we can use mountain crystal as a replacement. And then we have the metal or the air element. This is shown by different feathers or by the broom for the altar if you have it or through the atome, which is also made out of metal. This setup goes well with the fire element when we want to address anything that is connected to love and to this element altogether. So again, we have the elements in order of the supporting cycle. Here we have the wood element, which also is represented through herbs and through the incense. And I have added the bells this time because fire shows through singing and the voice and a clear voice or a clear bell can help us concentrate on the manifesting. I have added yarrow here. It can be burned or just kept on the altar. Yarrow is very bitter and it goes very well with anything we are trying to do with the fire element. Again, on the back is the burning place, the cauldron, and the red candle. Then we have the stones that can or might represent the fire. I have a carnelian here and a garnet. And I'm also going to add jade here because people who work with chakras know to the fire element comes the heart and love and the heart chakra, and heart chakra's color is green. Then we have the atome, and again, chalice and salt. If you're trying to work on protection, we can place black salt here, or if we're trying to do a love spell of a kind, we can use wine instead of the water. This setup belongs to the earth element. As you see, we can make an elemental altar, but it is sort of required to have all five elements on it. So let's start with the tree. I have here an orange incense stick, a pomegranate one, and a vanilla one. We can also use the oils here, and my favorite earth element oil is juniper. Then again, we have the fire element represented by the candle and the little cauldron. The earth element is represented here by carnelian and citrine. We can use any yellow stone or actually a stone that connects to the earth element. Also, we can place here anything that comes from the earth and that includes different bones. I have a little antler here. Again, the athame and the salt and the oil. Any type of oil belongs to the earth element, so if you would like to make an offering of olive oil, 
this would be where to place it in a little cup or bottle like this. The next element is the metal element. On the tree side we have several scents. I have the rosemary oil, then the sandalwood incense stick, or we can burn any type of resin that should burn on the charcoal. The herb that I placed there is tansy. I do not know how much it's used in the West, but this herb has been considered a very powerful herb for anything that needs to be cut off or returned to sender, so we use it quite often. We have the white candle. We can use the white candle as replacement for any other, as you know. So this is just for the metal element, the matching color. For the earth element, we have a selenite stone. Amethyst belongs to the metal element. And I have the visual calcit, but you can also place there any stone with sharp edges. For the metal element representation, I have placed the symbols because people often use them for astral work or trans induction or a different kind of meditation which belong to the metal element that's why they're here and also bay leaf belongs to the metal element it burns quite well and explosive so we can use them for anything that we need together with the metal element and the salt here Metal stands also for different spirits, so if you would like to use any stronger alcohol as offering, it belongs to this element. And lastly, the water element altar. I use either a sea green or blue cloth, or I use a black one, usually. In the tree element, we have the resins again, and this is sage that I have picked myself, so any smudge stick actually can be used for any element, but if you want to match the aroma to a certain element, you can do that. Oil scents that belong to the water would be any ocean breeze, bergamot and stuff like that. For the candle, I like using the black one. You can use black or blue, of course. That is the fire element there. Then we have the stones and those are mostly black stones. So you can use onyx. I have here numit and I have obsidian blade, tiny alchemy. Uh, also moonstone. Moonstone is white but belongs to the water element because of the moon water connection. Then we have the metal element represented here. Metal element doesn't change so much so it's always athame, feather, stuff like that. And then again we have salt or black salt and we have the water. Another thing that we can add here would be different bones and shells which do belong to the water element is times anything that we find that has died would actually also belong here. As you see, you have a huge choice of materials or scents or colors you can use. If you do not have a candle of certain color, you can replace it by white or black candle. And if you need a scent but you don't have one then you can use something according to your feeling that would bring you to that one element. The elemental altars are used for regular work if you go in that direction or you can use them also as a focus point if you're going into the astral. It helps to have all of these colors and related materials and a candle in front of you so you can focus on them while you're trying to cross over. When using the altar as a focus point, it usually happens that once you're trying to do some magic in the astral, this altar can also appear in these similar colors or using the same things you have placed on yours. 
uh, next time I'm going to show how you can write your own spells with the elemental idea behind it and how you can set up your altar, let's say for a love spell or a spell where you're trying to banish something or someone. Once you know what goes into which element, it's very easy to write your own rituals. Those rituals are usually much more powerful than the ones that you find online or in books because they're directly connected to you and to associations you have with different items on your altar. This is probably new to most of the people who do witchcraft, so if you have any questions or want to add something, please comment down below and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for being here.